Now, as you can see here, we have this processed scene and that resulted in a scene with a name which is optional, some objects which we called lot groups and each lot group can also have a name and one or more meshes. And this is basically what we pack into this binary buffer and pass it to the C sharp WPF side. And in the future, of course, some additional information can also be in here. Like if we import a model with animations and skeletons and those kind of things, then we can also include those here. And when we pass this to the level editor side, we are going to have asset classes that represent this particular kind of asset. So in this case, we have the geometry asset that we created or imported from a file. And when we pass it to the level editor, there is this geometry asset that will be able to save it to an asset file. And if it also contains other information like animation and skeletons, then those type of asset classes will be instantiated by geometry assets as well. And in turn, they will save their data to the asset file. So these asset files will be referenced by the components that an entity has. For example, a geometry asset can be used in the geometry component of an entity. And the texture asset can be used by material assets because materials are a collection of textures and shader code. So that's my plan. And now we can go back to the code and write our function. Until now, we have been using a coordinate system that's called the Cartesian coordinate system. And it's one of the simplest coordinate systems each point in a three-dimensional space is described by three numbers, x, y, and z. And those numbers describe the position of this point with respect to a point that is the origin. But there are, of course, other coordinate systems. And one of them that's used very often in game development is called the spherical coordinate system. And we can use that to describe the same point with respect to the same origin using a set of three different numbers. Here we have the same point P and it can be described with respect to the same point origin with two angles and the value of R, which is the distance of P to the origin. And since using a different coordinate system doesn't matter for the position of a point with respect to the origin, there is always a way to transform between the Cartesian coordinate system and the spherical coordinate system. And in case that z axis points upwards, we can derive these equations. So as you can see, r is just a good old Pythagorean formula for the length of the vector. And using basic trigonometry, we can also derive these two. And in case that we also want to go the other way around, from spherical coordinate system to the Cartesian coordinate system, we have the reverse of these formula. So putting the value of theta and phi in this formula and using the diameter of this sphere, we can compute the value of x, y, and z. So this formula holds for the Cartesian coordinate system when the z axis is the vertical one and x, y axis are on the horizontal plane. But because we are using a right-handed coordinate system where y points upwards and z is coming out of the screen, you can see that the y and z axis are switched here. So where we have a z axis, there is a y axis. And where we have a y axis, we have a z axis in the opposite direction. So we can use these formula still, but we need to switch z with y and y with minus z. And when we do that, we get to the formula for our right-handed Cartesian coordinate system. Here you can see that Y and Z axis are switched and Z has the opposite sign because it's going to the opposite direction. Why I am explaining all of this has to do with the way that I want to move the camera around the object. So as you might have guessed, the spherical coordinate system is the perfect system to use for moving around an object. And that's the way I want to move the camera. So here is the camera and it will be looking at the center of the object that we have. And we can just tilt the camera up and down and around the object. I would also like to be able to move the camera in the vertical direction like this. In case we have some kind of elongated object that we want to inspect on different heights. It would make sense to have the ability to move the camera's target in the vertical direction as well. So now that we know how to convert between Cartesian coordinate systems and spherical coordinate system, 
let's go to our code and implement the camera movement around the object. Here in Maya, I can add a sphere and I can show you the properties of the sphere. If you look closely, you can see that the sphere consists of stacks of circles and vertical segments. And I could change the number of these segments that we have. Now, if you look closely, we can see that the only thing that we need to do is to have the poles, the vertices here and the bottom one. And after that, we have just rings of vertices that we need to add. And luckily we treated the spherical coordinates in the last video. So if you haven't watched that video, just click on the link in the video and go watch that one at least the beginning part of it, where I explain the spherical coordinates, and we can use the spherical coordinates to generate the vertices, which is the easy part of generating the UV sphere. Going back to Maya and look at its UV coordinates, you can see how they are constructed. So here again, for the midsection, it's just a plane and that's rather easy to calculate. Like we go from zero to one in the U direction and then calculate each quad. And for the top and bottom caps, because there is just one vertex at the top, it opens it and maps each triangle to a separate section in the UV plane. And that way we'll have some deformation here. Everything that is between these triangles will not be displayed. And that means that we never can have a continuous texture in the top and bottom half. So if you use a software like Substance Painter, then you can just paint directly on top of this. And that way it will automatically move over from one edge to the other in a continuous way. That kind of works around that problem but normally it's some deformation. And if you have more segments, then this cap will become smaller and that problem will become smaller as well. So for example, if we have a lot of segments and you can see that this part where the deformations happen is rather small. And the nice thing about Maya is also that it will give us the edge where the geometry is split open. So this white line is the edge of the UVs and here they are only white edges because everything will be split apart. So the way we calculate the UV coordinates is pretty similar to the way we did it for the indices. And because in our pipeline, each index has a UV as well, we can calculate the UVs in the same step as we do for the indices. And as I told you before, here we have some deformations and it gets worse as the number of circles is decreased. And there is less deformation if we increase the number of circles. You might also have noticed that these lines aren't exactly straight. And that gets also worse when I decrease the number of segments. And this is not a bug in our program. This is just something inherent to the way we UV textured this sphere. Now let's go and see what a textured UV sphere looks like in Maya. Now, as you can see here, if I would increase the number of segments a bit, you can see that that wiggling happens here as well. And this is caused by the fact that each of these quads here has two triangles, but the top triangle, although here they look the same size, in reality, the top triangle has a smaller top side than the bottom triangle. And that causes this part of the texture to deform just a bit. And that happens all the way up and all the way down as well. So this is something that's inherent to the way we texture this object. And the only way we can improve on that one that I know of is just to increase the number of segments that we have. So we can see that now the lines are a lot more straight. But for now, we are kind of done. 
we have a sphere and we can set its smoothness like this. We have texture for it. We can set its number of segments and we can also see how many vertices and indices it has. Right now, because it's completely hard etched, you can see that there are as many vertices as there are indices. But if I would go completely soft like this, you can see that there are less vertices because multiple triangles share the same vertex. And this marks the end of today's video. I hope you learned something new and I hope you enjoyed watching this video.